criminals sending subliminals through your airwaves, stairways filled with narcissistic junkies trying to pop an attention pill, stainless steel blades stain the pavements with the blood of the nameless. I'm just saying, the greedy are immortalized and I'm just aging. Young cats scratching for a taste of that Caucasian, that Bayesian, whatever you can sell in the ape. A like, a follower, a comment with a love struck face, okay. It all sends the same chemicals to the brain at the end of the day. That's um that's 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 something up for the new. That's something up for the new that's, just, that's that sounds sick, man. Thank you. you know, <laughs> talented guy, man, honestly. So that came to you smiling, sun touching my eyelids, and avocados for lunch, and cherry bee be the potion. So how how's how's lockdown uh been for you, bro? Well, um it's been all right to be honest. Like for the first for the first like couple of months, I was just like at home, and to be honest, I was working on um, I was working on my uh, my next project, mixing and mastering all of that, and like doing like production bits and stuff like that. So it wasn't so bad at that time, and also, and also, at first, I was just kind of like, I was just kind of gassed to not be at work. You know what I mean? But um, <laughs> but then, but to, but. To be honest, where I was living at, because I've moved out of that, um, out of that place since then, but where I was living at the time, um, like, it's a very, like, community area. Like, I was in Grove Park, innit? And, like... I had and where's, where's ch- that for people who don't know? Uh, that's near Bromley, like, South London, quite far South East London. But, um, yeah, like, I had one of my bros that lived, like, two doors down from me, and then I was living with my bros, so it was, like... So it's like we were just we were just chilling out. Like it was calm. Like I'm not gonna lie, the first couple of months of lockdown was calm. To be honest, I'm a conspiracy theorist, man. I don't really believe in all this shit, man. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot that a lot of people who have an interest in the way that the world is going right now. Um, and when I say interest, I mean like they can benefit from the way the direction in which certain people are going. Yeah, I mean and um. And to be honest, for me, it doesn't like on a large scale. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like a proportionate response. You know what I mean? Like on a like for the whole world to put the whole world economy on pause for for a disease that has like a zero point two percent death rate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it, to me, I think like raw. Why would why didn't we lock off everything for Ebola? Why didn't we lock off everything for Ebola? Who knows? Mm. But um, yeah. I don't know, man. That's just, that's just me. That's just me. And if, and you know what else? The thing is, yeah. like, I feel like no one, no one in the world, like, how is there not one celebrity, not one nothing, like, saying, oh, no, this is bullshit. Like, no, nah, man, these guys are getting paid too much. I feel like that's not such a conspiracy theorist thing to say, you know? I actually, yeah. like, I mean, as long as you don't think it's 5G, <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, maybe no, maybe no. you do, maybe you do. I don't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm, you make such good music that I wouldn't care. <laughs> I'm excited to 5G, bro. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. They said that you can download shit at one gigabyte a second. Um, so have you been working on music during lockdown? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Not so much. Not so much like new music. Um, I mean, I mean, it is new music to 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 to, to you guys because it hasn't been released. But it's more so like. I've also been doing like mixing and mastering um, bits and pieces, um, and like I said, just finishing up that finishing up Daniel Stone Rocks too, which is um, which is finished now, you know, um, which is good. This is good, good news, good news. But when I finished it, I was kind of like, bro, I've been working, I've been working on this project for like a year, because you know Daniel Stone Rocks one came out in like August last year, mm-hmm. and the that was finished maybe like a month or so before that. So, and like Daniel Stone Rocks 2, some of the tracks on it, like I've been working on since I started this whole Daniel Stone Rocks thing. So it's like some of those tracks are two years old. You know what I mean? Uh, and like the whole, pro- this the project itself is like, has been being worked on for like a year. Um, just like cutting tracks, putting in new tracks, like um, getting artists in, getting instrumentalists in, all this kind of stuff. like. You know my music, you've heard my music. I like to do everything that I can with it, you know what I mean? That is rare that you do the mixing and mastering side yourself. It feels like when I listen mm. to your music that you have total control over it. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's a particular genre or it's conforming to a particular thing. That's what I love about it. No one is ever going to own me in this, yeah. in this thing. Even if I put, well, even if I put my pens and paper, well, you, there's, no, there's no paper that you can make me sign that, like, where I don't know the ins and outs of it. You know what I mean? Where I don't know it so well that I know there's nothing you can do to me in five years' time, I'm going to turn around and be like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. You know what I mean? I think that's testament to how you are kind of just completely yourself and your music. That's something that I really admire. Mm. Um, especially as someone who's kind of made grime music for a while. You do all the mis- mixing and mastering yourself, and h- how's that going? Um, do you know what? It's like every, every single track is a learning curve. You know what I mean? Um, every single track is like because 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 of the way i make music um i mean i probably could like do, um, get some stems and like send them off to um to an engineer to get them mixed and mastered and maybe as i get bigger and i have less time to do this kind of stuff and i've got more commitments and stuff like that then maybe it might get to a point where i have to where i have to you know get someone that i trust to um to do the mixes for me but i feel like I mean, I enjoy it, firstly because it's my music, but um, but yeah, just because, like I said, it's 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 like a learning curve, you know. Um, it is, it is quite. Every single time I sit down to mix and master track, I have to empty my mind and go. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I've got to just be intuitive and like li- and just let my let my ears, let my ears be the yeah. my guide. You know what I mean? Like, and obviously I know, I know, like I know what I know about like mixing and mastering and stuff like that, like um, frequency ranges and like where the sweet spot is going to be for each instrument. You know what I mean? And then from there, I kind of try to just be intuitive about it because yeah. I don't have any formal training or anything like that. You know what I mean? It is literally like there was a time when I didn't know what a compressor was. You know what I mean? And I was, and I was still mixing the tracks. You know? Yeah, and that takes an insane amount of motivation yeah. to not only write the lyrics uh, and do all of that, but then also do that side as well. So that's, I really respect that. So how would you best describe your sound for people who kind of don't really know? To describe my sound, I'd say it's quite layered. Definitely. Um, even though I, I I try not to layer it that much, but it is quite layered, and um, and it's quite uh, left field. Like I, I I always I always try to make decisions that people aren't expecting. Yeah, you know I mean, like I'll have some really nice guitar chords, and then I might like put some dirty synth bass underneath it. You know what I mean? Just something that I'd say just uh don't expect don't, don't go in with expectations you know because uh, you'll probably you'll probably have your expectations like fuck it. you'll have to put them out the window eventually because you'll be thinking by the time if you listen to a project of mine by the time you get to the second or third track you're thinking, all right cool i don't know what to i don't know what to like expect from the rest of this thing so i don't know jazzy shit mellow shit but also like the lyrics can be, the lyrics are quite um, snappy at the same time. I don't know. I always, I always tell people just listen to the music. There, there is an element of, of, un- of the unexpected in your songs. Um, mm. And the lyrics definitely are snappy. For example, like on River, that the instrument that was used was, do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it was a different kind of sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah. yeah. The, that weird kind of like buzzy kind of sound. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, and that's, that's what I like. And okay, so for instance, like, like the more I got into mixing and mastering is the more that I started to realize that um, you can just make your own sound. Like to this day, I don't, I don't, I use stock sounds. I use all stock sounds. Um, drums, um, uh, drums, plugins, like, I, I mean, I've downloaded the, the odd plugin here and there, but I, I, to be honest, I don't even use them. I'd like, um, most of the time, I use, like, natural instruments, like guitars or um, or analog synths. 
and record them in and then I just fuck with the sound and and yeah like mixing and mastering got me into that kind of sound design aspect and and just being able to create like these unique textures that kind of, that can that can these like unique textures that people would listen to and be like raw I don't I don't I haven't heard I haven't heard that kind of sound before you know what I mean yeah would you say that you make the lyrics around the music or the music around the lyrics I'd say I make I'd say most of the time I do make the music first. Mm-hmm. Most of the time I do make the music first, but um, so yeah, I get, I get, I guess it's mostly lyrics around the music. But um, when I'm writing lyrics, it's normally kind of concepts that I already have in my head. Excuse me. Um, it's normally concepts, ideas. It might be a couple of lines that are there, and then you know the instrumental comes along. And then it's just a matter of, you know, solving that problem of what, 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 what do I put with this instrumental? Um, do I take these couple of lines that I wrote about this girl that I met three weeks ago and, and like try and develop onto that? Or do I take this whole verse that I wrote for a completely different beat and like just like see how it sounds on this and shit, it might sound better. Like, I don't know, the process can vary a lot of the time, but I do most of the time make a beat first and then I think about like what the lyrics are kind of going to be. Yeah, because I guess in that way the music kind of shapes the vibe of the lyrics as well. When you've written something, it's already got all these like parameters to it. You know what I mean? That you kind of have to, and when you're making like music, when you're making music, it's kind of hard to just, to hit those points. You know what I mean? Like on purpose. So it's, it's so I, 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 the way I make music, I like I like things to just fall into place. You know what I mean? I like to do stuff, and then, the, and then it just falls into place. You know what I mean? That's why that's kind of why I make the music first. You know? Yeah, and I think being in the rap world, I think that's a key thing because people tend to make uh, lyrics which are disjointed with the music because the emphasis is so much on the lyrics. Yeah, de- def- definitely with definitely with um older or more underground forms of rap, definitely. And obviously, you know, like nowadays, rap is going down a hole. I mean, me personally, I wouldn't even call a lot of hip hop rap specifically. I think rap and hip hop are like, they're very, very closely linked, but they are still two different things. You know what I mean? Like you can be in the hip hop genre like Erica Badu, for example. Like she's straight up hip hop to me. Like obviously she's neo soul, but she's also very, very hip hop, but she's not like a rapper, you know? Um, uh, what, 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 I think it was most deaf. He, he, he said, rap is something you do and hip hop is something that you live. You know what I mean? Like hip hop is like a whole culture, man. It's break dancing. It's fucking like it's it's all the fucking dances. It's um, it's fucking it's an attitude. It's so it's so much, you know. Yeah, and I guess in the seventies, people were doing break dancing before people were even rapping and graffitiing and all of that. And then yeah. rap was just a cult was just a uh, product of that culture in the eighties. Exactly. Exactly. What inspires your lyrics and how do you go about writing them? Um, well, my lyrics are inspired by pretty much anything. Um, like, yeah, I mean, obviously I got a lot of like songs about girls and shit like that, but, uh, but, if you listen to the lyrics, you, you, you notice that I never like, I always talk about, I always make these stories um, like. Uh, or, 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 original. Yeah, yeah, original, but more, the, what's the word, allegorical. Like they're always, they're always, it's always representing something. The story's never just like, yeah, I met some girl, I fucked her and she wanted me so bad and blah, blah, blah. It's always like, it's always like, okay, peel back the layers and you realise that there's a whole attitude. There's a whole, like, um, like for instance, with porn star, like, that was, like, that one's very indulgent. That one's, like, supposed to be very, um, like, very raunchy, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you peel back the layers and I'm really kind of revealing, like, this kind of shift in sexual attitudes. You know what I mean? Like, this girl, she's got three boyfriends and I'm number three. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I, I only serve a purpose. And, that, and that's, and for me, that comes from a story in real life, but the story, I felt like the story deserved a song because to me it kind of represented that change 
that that weird kind of change in sexual attitude that, that's kind of that's kind of going on which is uh, to me is positive you know what i mean i like the fact that like females are kind of embracing their sexuality a lot more and like they feel they feel a lot less kind of apprehensive to just to, to just live their lives, you know what I mean? And it's interesting that you said that it becomes a symbol rather than just purely being something that happens in your life because it elevates it to a to a to a level where it's 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 like anyone can relate to it. And and I like that as well because there's not a lot of people that that do that because do you know what I mean? Everyone loves to talk about how how many girls that they're fucking or whatever. But then like for you to come along and like just be honest about about things. Uh, where are you from uh, in London, and how 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 has that kind of influenced your your music? Um, so I grew up. Well, I grew up in South London, um, uh, Brixton for a bit, and then but mostly Streatham, which is like right next to Brixton, um, and I mean growing up there. Yeah, I think growing up there affected my music a lot because, you know, it affected my taste in music, um, affected people that, I, that I'm around, you know. Um, and like I said, like, I write, I just write music about the story. So pretty much every story that I write about took place in, in South London or, I mean, at least somewhere in London. You know what I mean? Um, um, yeah, so I, I, it, massive, 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 massive effect on my music. And how has it affected your music? Just like, I feel like it's just like a lot more raw, like because of it, you know what I mean? Because there's this like realness to South London, this kind of rawness that's like, that, you know, and a lot of people say it, you know what I mean? Because I don't know, everyone thinks South London is like some dangerous place or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I, it, it's just more like war, basically. And what was it like growing up then? I've never been rich, but at the same time, I mean, yeah, I have been pretty rich. Before, but, but, um, but it's like my mum always put like a huge emphasis on education. Well, my, and my dad as well put a huge emphasis on education. So I, ne- so I, I never felt like I was being like, denied education by the system because I never looked to the system for for that because uh, at home I was always uh, at home I was always learning about about uh, like so much different shit so it, it, it's like and also like because of that like growing up around people who might not have like had that at home it kind of like showed me this contrast and also showed me that I was like quite lucky so I have those kind of parents who were so dedicated to like educating me and making sure that like you know I was in, I was informed like about who I am as a black man and just as a man and you know and as a human being and um, and all these kind of things. Yeah, and you talk about your dad quite a lot as well. Yeah, in your music. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to talk about him a lot more, man, because, uh, yeah, he's, he, he, yeah, he's, um, he's definitely a very important figure in my life, as, as, as he would, as your dad would be, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, when I was younger, I felt like I had a lot of anger towards my dad when I was, like, way younger, um, and I think as I've grown up and matured, like, I can really, like, me and my dad are really similar, you know, um, so, can really understand him a lot more now. Also, where where are you right now? Is it your is it your yard? No, 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 no. I'm at my friend's house. Okay. Where do you want to take music, ideally? Well, I I don't know to be honest with you because I, I I always I always have this kind of conversation myself as well um just because the fact that in music unless you're unless you're like touring or selling and saying about of or moving and saying about units i.e like getting loads and loads of streams there's not a lot of other revenue streams for like an out and out artist someone who like 
makes tracks and releases them and tries to get them to pop. You know what I mean? Um, but then I've got like these other skill sets, like the ability to mix and master and all these other kind of things. And to be honest, and and you know, I do sessions for people sometimes, and like I engineer for people, I produce for people as well, and shit like that. And that kind of stuff is enjoyable as well. Um, and you know, I kind of and and I like that because it kind of gives me it puts takes pressure on me to be to be that uh, that artist that has to sell like a million just to break even. You know what I mean? Like I don't like I don't have to be that artist and cater to you know like trends and shit like that. And um, and you know I, and and I wouldn't anyway. But it's just like because 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 of the things that I've learned in in, in the time that I've been making music, like it, it it it's not like just being an artist is my one option, my one route. You know what I mean? Like I, I, to be honest, I want to be like more of a producer. Um, in in the old school sense of someone who gets a track and t- takes it to that next level. You know what I mean? Um, whether that be um, by putting more in, uh, musical elements in, um, but mostly just about like being like a director for a track, you know, like like how a director is for a movie, being that guy for 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 an artist and their, and their music, you know what I mean? And you know that doesn't mean that I'm not going to make my own music. I'm always going to make my own music, but um, yeah, I kind of I, I want to be like a Pharrell type, you know what I mean? Um, that's that's kind of the idea. Uh, also, who who are your main influences as well? Uh, like Pharrell, Tyler Crater, Jimi Hendrix. Um, yeah, I can see how Jimi Hendrix has has influenced yeah, you definitely. Yeah. Definitely, like yeah, but yeah, since I was like sixteen, I've been listening to like Hendrix, fifteen even, listening to Hendrix and just like. Just but and, and and I just love his attitude towards the music. Like it's in like it's it's a very jazz attitude where he's so free form, so so like Yeah, there is definitely that in your I, I guess uh the essence of jazz is to improvise, isn't it? So that's 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 another kind of thing that you feel in your music as well when it when it kind of dips in and out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just to have that kind of like that feeling of like you're always on the edge of your seat, you know what I mean? Because you know, because like it, everything could change just like that. You know? Yeah, it also reminds me of those rappers as well. There's certain rappers in the '90s, especially that kind of would say a rhyme which was just out of the blue. It didn't, it didn't fit in with a rhyme scheme. It kind of reminds me of that as well a little bit. Oh shit! Do you remember when? Uh, do you remember I, I, we performed together at um, that event? Oh, where was it? It was in like a university. Oh, yeah, 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 Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah shit. Um, and I had my saxophone guy with me that day as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good show, actually. That was a good show. 